Dam on this legendary R&B cruise on behalf of myself and the entire ship's company. It's great to have you back on board and we're looking forward to having a great cruise with you. Once again, our sail away celebration has been rescheduled to 5.30 p.m. on the Lido deck, deck number nine, all the way at the back of the ship. All right, legendary Rhythm and Blues cruisers. Let me say goodbye to FLL over there. I'm Roger Neighbor, and I'm the, um, the ring leader of the, the staff here of the legendary Rhythm and Blues cruise. These are my partners. They've uh, been working their tail off all year long to make this the best music blues event on the planet. And I've got a few others that aren't on the stage that work for us, and we were really late starting. We didn't start training until 11 a.m., which is about an hour and a half behind schedule. So they've done an incredible job of covering the pool and getting this all up and going. So give them a round of applause. And let's toast to all of you from us, the Legendary River and Blues Cruise. 19 acts, 14 special guests, over 70 shows. We're going to have a great week here. Legendary Rhythm and Blues Cruise 2007. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage to kick this thing off the one and only Mr. Tab and Walk. that I was involved in co-producing and, and booking the talent for was in 1992. So it's a 15-year span now, and we've come a long way from the small uh, ships 
of uh, say 650 to the the one that's back here. <laughs> yeah. It's a magical event, and the ma the music magic and the community magic and the family magic happens every year. The first morning out at sea after we leave Florida, we have a returning party for all the returning veteran cruisers, and then we have a virgin party on the back pool deck for the first timers, and we call them virgins because they've really never experienced our cruise. They may have been on other cruises, but they haven't experienced our cruise, and until a person does sail with us, they may have a, an idea of what it's like, but they really don't have an idea of what it's like. The first one I went on, the first blues cruise was the Mediterranean blues cruise, and I actually um, was dragged on, because I thought it was gonna be shuffleboard, ice sculptures, not my thing at all. And uh, it was a totally, it was a life-changing experience. I have made friends on this boat that are my, are my family now. You hang with the musicians, you meet the musicians, they become your friends, so when they travel cross country, they'll come to your house, you go out to dinner together, go to see all their shows, it's magic. So we, we get lays and we lay all the virgins and we have, we have entertainers out there as well, singing to them and, and we have performance in the returning party as well. This is my first time being on this uh, side of the ship and this is the first time since 1957 <laughs> I've been on stage with any artist of the jam. <laughs> but it's been good. I said, I said to myself, well, I'm going to jam once, but I tell you, when you start to jam, it just catches it, man. <laughs> yeah. You want to you wanna get into the jam, yeah. baby. Hey, yeah. I'm, I'm now, I'm a, a real jammer. Mm -hmm. ship, the, the Vista Lounge, uh, is a three-story ship theater, um, and so that's one of our main stage areas, obviously. It's got a nice dance floor. You going to mug me? I might got to mug you. It's that gorgeous or what, eh? And I believe I can run a decent marathon. Thank you very much. Download v now. The other main stage that we have on the legendary Rhythm and Blues Cruise is the aft pool deck stage, and that is a piece of work. It's up nine decks high above the water. We rent a crane. We have to crane up decking. 
staging, lights, sound, backline. Is, is the magic of this cruise under the stars um, at the sunset and then into the night. We're hoping you're gonna have a good time this week. I hope I say you're gonna have a good time. I hope I can help you have that good time.
The uh, third stage is the crow's nest, which is a beautiful lounge at the front of the ship, 10th floor up, glass all the way around, and there's an ocean view as we sail. And we put some of our pro bands in there, and, and then our passengers uh, come in, and we have a pro-am jamarama, is what we call it. I run sound in the crow's nest with a partner. There are two of us up there, two engineers. And we rotate out because that room, basically, we leave the sound system on 24-7. For all of the cruisers who brought their instruments, the semi-professional players on the boat, it's a room provided for them to come up. They can get together and just jam together, or there are actually bands on this boat who paid to come on the boat. They're not booked to play, but they came as a unit. Oh, you ain't said nothing wrong yet. One more time. It provides them a place to go and uh, show off their talents. And there's about a hundred of them that do bring musical instruments on board. And it gives them an opportunity to play with each other and maybe they just might be able to play with some of the artists like Tab Benoit or Little Ed. Dude meets another dude on the deck, says, hey, let's go jam. They can go up there and jam. We now have an acoustic lounge also. The ship has about six different venues. We use five of the six. The Queen's Lounge is, uh, is a theater culinary arts center and we also use it as an acoustic room and it works beautifully for our acoustic artists or our bands that pretty much play on plug. situation and I'm sick and tired of waiting you know it's hard for me to take it slow all I want baby is for our love to grow and I know I know that you were seen the other night in the presence of another man and I know but I ain't thinking straight enough to Understand, but I'm trying hard to figure out what it's all about. Hey, baby, you know, I might not never know, but I'm trying hard to figure out. Maybe the next time, maybe the next life. Not right now, but maybe in the next life. Yeah. ain't even close to how I planned it. So many things I'm trying to say, but you don't hear. Honey, you just turn away. And I believe that you might have bad intentions hiding up your sleeve. Baby, I can't see, but the good inside your heart just needs to be set free. Why don't you, baby, set it free? And I'm trying hard to figure out what it's all about. Hey, baby, you know I might not never know, but I'm trying hard to figure out. Maybe the next time, maybe the next life. Not right now, but maybe in the next life. of another man I know I ain't thinking straight enough to understand I, I just don't understand but I'm trying hard to figure out what it's all about Hey baby you know I might not never know but I'm trying hard to figure out maybe the next time maybe the next life not right now but maybe the next time 
maybe the next life Maybe the next life Maybe in the next time around <laughs> and then, of course, and there's the infamous piano bar. We're starting at about 8 o'clock in the evening. We've got two hired gun piano players on board. <laughs> night spot, you know, the, the after hours kind of thing that, that happens on this ship. I come from Kansas City, which was uh, the heart of the country, the farthest city anywhere from any ocean in the United States. <laughs> and the musicians that toured on the road through my nightclub in Kansas City, I, I became very close and tight with. And so I, I knew the, the right mix of musicians that might be happy uh, being around their fans for more than a four hour performance time. Taj Mahal has been on every one of these. Some people, they come on a cruise, you know, they pack their bags, they bring a couple bags where the clothes, so on like this. Taj comes on a cruise, <laughs> he brings this full of spices, hot sauce, <laughs> jerk seasoning, this, that. We went up to his room, I saw baggage and baggage, and he bring a whole thing out, just full of spices. That's right. That's the way to cruise. That's right. What are we cooking? All right, we're gonna start off here. First of all, I just wanna say to everybody, I've been saying for years that my background is Southern American from South Carolina, but my mother comes from a good cooking tradition, and my father's people are from the Caribbean. So it's always been a mixture of all these different things, blues and calypso, blues and reggae, reggae, and soca, you know, so on gospel so it comes up in the food if you go to the Caribbean that's one of the things that you're gonna find it's a mixture of all these different cultures and everybody borrowing a little bit from here you know you know you got some Chinese jerk chicken you know you got jerk <laughs> egg noodles you know what I'm saying and ain't nobody upset the islands in the Caribbean that we we select from year to year is an, also an attraction. This year we happen to have three, and they're all three different. Uh, Grand Turk is a small island that's halfway down the chain towards towards the Eastern Caribbean, and there's a new pier there with a, a little plaza area, and we had a performance on shore. When you get on stage with these people, you know it's time to have some fun. Little Ed, Little Ed and the Blues Imperials, he's a lineage from J.B. Hutto. He would teach me a lick. Yeah, yeah. And then he'd leave and go out of town, go overseas or something, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then he'd come back and I'd be the learned it, you know. I'd, I'd be like, JB, Uncle J.B., I got it. And he'd say, yeah, but can you do this? And then he'd come <laughs> up on me and then freak me all out. You know? He's a spitting image all the way down from from guitar style to vocal technique and, and his fez. So keeping the bloodlines going is really one of the ultimate goals of the legendary rhythm of blues cruise. Thank you! Is that all right, y'all? Yeah. We try to change up this a little bit. <laughs> Sickle in my window. You know what? The table was great, and everything was all the same. 
I said, what kind of toe would this man have standing on his toe like this? <laughs> and with, and with shoes on the soft soul shoes. That's, that's genius, man. My wife just hunched her. I was so in the side. Look, 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 look. I said, I'm looking. <laughs> We're getting ready for an autograph party in the Lido Pool area, which is midship. It's large enough where we can put all the band leaders and all the special guests, and, and people can bring their posters or their CDs or their t shirts and, and uh, have FaceTime with the headliners. Went up to autograph session yesterday. <laughs> yeah. I never saw nothing like this in my life. <laughs> the fans, this this is a blues crew, these are blues lovers. They these, into the oh, blues. Yeah. Yeah, they here they here for the music. Yeah. And whatever you do, if you do it well, they accept you at doing what you do. Uh, which takes us to our silent auction that we have on board. Uh, the silent auction that we have uh, benefits the Blues Foundation in Memphis. It's another beautiful piece of work by Commander Cody. What an artist. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Carl Perkins from Memphis. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the world's saddest song. How many people have a picture of your dog in your wallet? That's, that's what it's all about. Saturday night, just watching the late late show. I got a bottle of wine, and I got a pack of cigarettes. But I got no place to go. And I saw your new man yesterday. He was wearing my parachute. I'm down the sea and stands again. I met my old friend Bob today. He you knows the one from Bowling Green. He had the prettiest little girl with him. That I had ever seen. I couldn't hide my tears at all. Honey, she looked just like you. To get high 
They don't seem to realize I'm too far gone to try These lonely memories They're all that I can lose And now now the seeds and stems that can dog died today. And that left me all alone. A man from Adirondack Trust Company just drove off with my mobile home. Well, that's all dropping the like a child. Come better losing you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Did you feel that this morning when we were coming in the harbor? It was like, dang. How many hundred tons this ship is in the, in the ocean? This goes like, oh, you didn't know me, did you? <laughs> you know all that cheeking you feel when you're on board? That's how I feel when I'm on land. <laughs> yeah, really? Yeah. So I'm so used to this, you know? So it when I'm on off. land, I walk down the street like this, you know? <laughs> El borrachero, eh? Yeah. The weather's been kind, yeah. <laughs> even if we have had to zigzag somewhat, but we made it. Right. We were about 70 or 80 degrees off course one night, heading straight for an island, so I was just hoping that you know, <laughs> the rain would go away. <laughs> it was the wrong island as well, but, you know. <laughs> The rocking and the pitching of the ship doesn't happen very often on these newer vessels, especially. There's... It happens on the older ones a lot more. Because if you're in the Vista Lounge, which is the nice big theater in the front of the ship, you'll hear these these things that sound like doors opening or slamming shut. And it's what it is: it's the stabilizers coming out and keeping the ship from rocking too far one way or another. And so. You know, when we were hitting 12-foot swells or something like that, the ship is still handling those 12-foot swells pretty, pretty evenly. Back in the day, in the 90s, when we had older vessels, um, there was a Costa Classica ship, which was almost a brand new ship in 1994. It didn't have such good stabilizers, and on the first night we were going out of San Juan, we were hitting some waters probably like we were just the last couple of nights and the people on the dance floor were starting over here and they were going over here and then they were going back over here and Terrence Simeon Zydeco band was on stage and so you know Terrence is moving around barefoot and, and he's a he's a guy that rolls but the the dancers were, were the ones that were moving around so it, John Hammond I think was the only one that we had him on a stool on the pool deck last year when we hit some swells and he was up there almost like riding a bull you know he was 
but uh, yeah. And we've had wind that was bad enough that it really uh, affected the performers. You know, they were holding up their harmonicas, and the harmonicas were playing all by themselves. Ten whole chord, you know. <laughs> you know, a lot of people talking about that dress this morning. Oh, really? Yeah. And the other question was, I know. how could she, wearing that dress and those shoes, with her long legs, stand up there like that when the rest of the guys were like having trouble? Everybody's falling over like drunks. I know. I was too. I was holding on to that mic stand. Our bass player said, it's, it's one thing to be in a band playing music, but the other thing to be the flying wind for the Melendez as well, it's kind of tough. You know, so. But it was fun. I, I kept slipping off of my stool. I think that's the most challenging gig I've ever done. Really? Yeah. We were at the front of the ship, so we were busting up waves the whole time. Yeah. There was a lot of noise. It was pretty noisy. Yeah. I can feel it on my back, you know, because I'm behind you guys. That means I'm in, more in the front of the ship.
you were a huge hit last night Thank on you. stage. And so it's great to see that Johnny Taylor's got children now yes. keeping his tradition along. We've got a lot right. of blues royalty on this ship. I love it. And, uh, and, you I know, love it. and then now we have you and, and Ronnie Baker Brooks, Murali Coriel, and Little Ed of the Blues Imperials, all the younger generation keeping the music happening for us. I had no idea what to expect, and everything has been just amazing. And this is day three. What's been your highlight so far? I'm, I'm becoming very friendly with the piano lounge and seeing the sunrise at 7 in the morning and singing with all the other musicians. That's the magic of this legendary rhythm and blues cruise yeah. is that the interaction among the artists then trickles on out to the fans right. and you, you get a whole family of blues fans on the ship. So when you leave here, you will have a family of 1,800 people. Yeah, yeah. It's a big boat. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice big ship. boat. It's a nice <laughs> ship. <laughs> well, thanks for having me. We, uh, we chose to come to St. John because it's such a beautiful island. You can see the island up here. Yes. Uh, St. John is, is my favorite island in the Caribbean, and St. Thomas is the, the stopping pier. Mm -hmm. So we do have to take a ferry here, and, and we've been fortunate to have some friends here in St. John that set up a stage mm -hmm. for one of our bands, Joey Gilmore. He was and awesome. The beach, last bar on your left. Okay. My name is Steve Simon. On behalf of the St. John Blues Festival, on behalf of the Beach Bar, and, by, and on behalf of the magical island of St. John in the U.S. Virgin Islands, we welcome all of you from the legendary Rhythm and Blues Cruise, and we welcome from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, Joey Gamore! <laughs> If you see my baby, if you, please give up my regards for me. Oh no! If you see my baby, so I'm in. I'm in misery. I stayed out all night long I was looking for something That I already had at home She was a woman that stood by my side Like a fool, I stood alone. But if I could just make her see that her leaving made a change in me, if I could start all over again, I'd be my 
dark side to the bitter end If you see my baby Here's what I want you to do Tell I'm sorry I just bit off more than I could chew about the blues is it's also American history. This year I went to the Blues Music Awards in Memphis and you see, you know, there's so much, there's a history of music there, there's a history of the civil rights struggle. In fact, you know, I, I, I wish more Americans were involved with the blues because it's, it's ours. It's a piece of America that we cannot let die. Dick Waterman's on board, really the man most responsible for modern day blues awareness. I, I feel. In a world of mentors and protégés, I have a lot of this. The big man is the howling wolf. And in this case, he's the protégé, because he's with Sunhouse, who was his mentor in the Delta in the 40s. This was taken backstage at a shindig show in Los Angeles, where the Rolling Stones wouldn't go on unless they hired Howling Wolf, to which they said, we don't do animal acts, but if you want, I'll be a guy. Right. So uh, they did Red Rooster. Then the stones draped over a white Rolls Royce Cornish on stage and did I Can't Get No Satisfaction, which was a surreal moment. But this is Wolf and Son, and I had the stones behind me, and one of them came up to me and said, who's the old man that Wolf is so excited to see? And I said, that's Sun House. And he said, oh, blimey, he's the one that knew Robert Thompson. And I said, yeah. And he went back and told the others. That's 1965. And I say, which stone was it? Brian. Brian Jones was the real blues fan. Brian had the record collection that the others came on. It was Brian. I think the last time I saw Otis Clay was in Switzerland, but because of the boat, Otis Clay came up. Hey, Kim, how you yeah. doing, man? I'm going, like, wow, <laughs> cool. You know, Otis Clay saying, you know, just saying hi to me. You know, like, you know, because it's that whole family thing that this boat promotes. Otis Clay and is doing a Deep Soul workshop tomorrow, uh, just explaining the Memphis and Chicago and the Muscle Shoals Deep Soul. One of your idols um, was O.V. Wright. How is it that you came to have the deep love and affection for his tune, A Nickel and a Nail? The first time I actually recorded the song was on Soul Man Live in Japan. Mm -hmm. And you will hear on the intro, this is dedicated to an old friend of mine, O.V. Wright, because we came through gospel together. Woo! We thank you. Thank you so much.
so musically compatible to, you know? So we just started, you know, you're in the groove and it's really flowing. The audience is really there with you. And so things start coming at you. Consciously, like you're preaching. It can be very similar. You know, I, I actually I go someplace else. I get lonely. Get lonely. Living here without you. Sometimes when I think about all of my friends that have gone on. I get lonely, get lonely, no more, no more phone call, calling on the phone, I get lonely, get lonely, when I think about all of my friends, I get lonely, get lonely, Albert King, it makes me feel lonely. ZZ Hill. I get lonely. Jackie Wilson. I get lonely. Lil Milton. Murphy don't it make you feel lonely? Sometimes I get so lonely till I can cry. And sometimes I cry. Sometimes in the midnight hour, I get lonely. Johnny Taylor, the blues whale. <laughs> Then I think about all of my gospel friends that make me feel long. Mm. For 44 years, oh, you were just like a brother of mine. Hey. Tyrone Davis, would oh, don't it make you feel lonely? The thing about the cruise is the opportunity to work together and being together, you know, and sitting around talking. We don't get a chance to do that too much anymore, you know, because most of the time uh, you don't have the so-called, as we in the 
other days we call it package. You had these packages together, and everybody, not only were you doing shows together, but you got a chance to hang and tell the stories as we were, as, in this music as we were growing up. You talk about all your friends that's no longer with us. You talk about Tyrone Davis. You know, you got all the Tyrone Davis stories, you know what I mean? You got the Harold Barrage stories, you got the Johnny Taylor stories. That's the good thing about uh, the cruise, and everybody's locked in. You know, you, it's like living in the same house together. You know, when I see Bobby Rush, you understand, and Mel Waiters, and folks like that, then we can say, okay, hey man. And it's almost like they, these people are there with us now because we, you know, we're telling all these great stories and there are a lot of stories. I guess they live on in our hearts. I get lonely. I get lonely. I get lonely. Living here without you. That I can't go too far. That I can't go too far on a necklace. Ah! Woo, baby, 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 baby. I can't do it. Ah, baby, I can't go too far. That I can't go too far on a necklace. Thank you. Thank you so much. When you get people on here like Dick Waterman and, and people who have, uh, his, you know, know the history of the music so well, and these people will show you stuff that, that uh, you know, where the music came from, why it is where it is now. It's very important, uh, I think, to uh, include that in there, along with all the other little cultural things, the art shows and auctions and stuff like that, that, that you would see maybe on other cruises. We honor the people that have come before us. They live in our hearts. And Bob Marley said, Good friends we have, good friends we've lost along the way. In this great future, you can't forget your past, so dry your tears, I say. No woman no cry. Got married yesterday on the beach. Did you know that? Yeah, I know he did. I was there. Oh, you were yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, I went. I'm not, I, I, boy, I barely made it, but I, I'm not going to miss Dick Waterman's. Uh, you know, he's been very good to me over the years. <laughs> Anything about Dick before you get married to him. <laughs> Brother Dick, you see, when your mama cook a pie, you must stick your finger in it and tell how it's gonna taste when it gets done. Have you tasted the pie before you get married? Maybe <laughs> once. The answer, the answer would be yes or no. <laughs> Now, I, in my position as a blues singer, call a preacher, have the power that God give me to give to you, that this lady, Cindy, this man, Big Water, do you swear to take this woman for your lawful wedded wife, to love her and cherish her the rest of your life, to death do your heart? I do. Cindy, do you take Dick Waterman to be your lawful husband, cherish him to sick and help him, the best of your ability, the rest of your life? Definitely. Well, I pronounce you before I announce you. <laughs> Dick don't have any shoes on. <laughs> Can I have anything to do with you? <laughs> <laughs> Only way he can leave here is by a car. He don't have a key or a car, so you stuck, brother. <laughs>
just a man, only a man, I am, in the eyes of the world, just a touch, not a lot, but when I walk with you, my shoulders touch. to kiss the bride. I lied. I didn't forget. Dick was looking at me. Row <laughs> 06 was a, a, a real tough year with Sam Myers and Ruth Brown and James Brown and you know, lots, lots of good friends. So used to hanging out together more, being closer friends and loving the music. And thank you. And to, and to each of you, let me say this. I wish each of you in your life a love and as deep and profound as I found in this woman. Now, since I'm in the mood, anybody else want to get married? Do anybody want to get a divorce? Here we go, real quick. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, here we go. And then yesterday was St. Bart's, our first time ever in the St. Bart's. It's one of the most beautiful islands in the Caribbean. It is a miracle I'm getting off the boat. I left that sound system on. They can be playing right now if they want to, but I'm getting off the boat. <laughs> I want to be on some, some solid ground for just a second. I actually wanted to see this beautiful place. I don't know if I'll ever get back here, so I wanted to see this beautiful port. I read about it online before I came, so I wanted to, to witness it firsthand. The waters down here are just fabulous. They're warm, there was a great, blue turquoise color to the waters, the swimming and the diving and the snorkeling and just laying in the sun and catching your wind and, and uh, replenishing before you come back to the ship for our four or five stages of uh, entertainment. We were out doing a tour of uh, gigs the week of Katrina and uh, this was the song that came out of it besides we raised a, a certain good amount of money for for Katrina relief, we uh, yeah. we hope it all got there. All right, we're gonna try this anyway. It's called Blackwater. You know I'm swimming in black water.
Now there's Paul's in Washington. Don't care about poor boys down here. So very much, you know. now, I've been extremely fortunate since 1991 when I went on my first cruise ship experience. I have never been seasick. My husband doesn't get seasick at I, all. I, I like to move, rock, and groove to the music, and and so uh, maybe that keeps 
keeps my m Roger, I don't think that does going. it because I rock and groove just as much as you do, <laughs> and I get seasick with the best of them. <laughs> you guys put on a hell of a show. Hey, thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. My wife never even heard of Zydeco until you guys came out, and now she's a forever fan. That's good to hear. Yeah. Man. Yep. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Well, I was like uh, one of the first uh, band when the, when the Blue School started. Listen. I've been lucky, darling, but I tell you what, when I met you, I hit the jackpot. And you can take that to your best bank, baby. Little Creole talking to you from the bayou. The music I play is based, based on the blues, you see what I'm saying? You know, I play the 145 blues, you know, to my, that, that, those, those are my card uh, changes. <laughs> That's why, look here. You know I've always been lucky. I really is the jackpot with you. You know I've always been lucky. Honey, I really hit the jackpot with you. Listen, I can win at bingo. Like Jack, you know I'll stand. I can win at Texas Hold'em. I even cash in at the train. I always feel really lucky. I really is the jackpot. You know I always feel really lucky. I really is the jackpot. Listen, would you by my side? You can be my lucky charm, and you know we'll be happy, and we can never go wrong. You know I always feel really lucky. I really is the jackpot with you. You know I always feel lucky. I really is the jackpot with you. Ow! People, it catches the ear, and people like it, you know. And that's good for me, and, and it, it makes me feel good. That's that's the. You see, that's my appreciation. That's my reward. Well, I've been coming on uh, the legendary blues cruise for five or six times. Roger keeps saying six. I can't even remember anymore. But uh, this year, my special project is very New Orleans oriented. Uh, it's the Big Easy Boogie. And I put together the uh, original Fats Domino Band, or many of the members of the original Fats Domino Band. When Katrina hit, I said, you know, this is really timely. We need to get this out. You know, it's very important that the music of New Orleans survive. But this is kind of our maiden voyage, you might say. Went down in the swamp in the evergreen And the hoodoo woman called Miss Addie Green Some men say she can turn water into fire And then to make a heart but with desire, she might be a new queen. Get it down in New Orleans. She might a Creole queen. I think so, man. They call her Hattie Green. They call her Hattie Green. It is gal in all of New Orleans. I see the tan alligator. A black cat jump in the water, start to swim. Jump in the bayou, join it red. She knows being a man back from the dead. She might.
make love all night long. Uh -huh. She'll wake you up in the morning with a pretty little cage of song. She'll take your heart, bake it in two. You ain't careful, boy, that's what she'll do. She might. To make your heart burn with desire Cause she my voodoo queen Way down in New Orleans That's right She my kid queen I love that little Hattie Green They call her Hattie Green Prettiest gal in all of New Orleans Come on, Jimmy Take me down to the party theme nights. We have a Mardi Gras theme that's just the most popular thing amongst our cruisers, as you can imagine. We'll have a parade tonight across the stage that will probably have 150 people in costume going across the stage. From Cambridge, Massachusetts, the first time y'all. They're coming on in right. They're coming on in right. Mardi Gras, Mardi Gras. We had a Pirates of the Caribbean theme, and that was a very popular parade last night when they walked the plank. Um, maybe 100 people participated in that. If I've had one person say that you've, this is the greatest vacation of my life or you've changed my life. I've had 100 on this ship this week. And it doesn't just happen on the cruise. It happens all over the country throughout the year. When pe people go to blues festivals, the cruisers flock together and it happens all over again because the blues cruise family is a family that's a family for life. There might have been one blues cruise prior to my beginning on it. Uh, I think we came in on the second one and we've been doing them ever since. And uh, at first it was like, do I really want all these people to see me in my underwear every day? You know what I mean? Do I want to, uh, you know, I'm gonna be a, a, accosted. And it was so uh, the opposite of that. I keep calling it the love fest, you know? Because it is kind of like the love boat because, <laughs> because, I mean, you can really do no wrong on this boat. If, as an entertainer, everybody loves you, you love them.
you're playing gigs all over the country, all over the world, you're going to get people wherever you go saying, hey, I saw you on the Blues Cruise. I'm a cruiser. Oh, yeah. Whatever, you know. They come see wearing their colors, man. I'll see you in January, you know. And, the hats and, and the... uh, you see these people wearing these fezes. I mean, it's really become like a... <laughs> A secret society. It is. <laughs> yeah. Shriners. You know. You know. Yeah, I mean, a certain in group thing. Pretty soon there's going to be a handshake. There might already be one. You know. Woo! -hoo, you know, one of those. <laughs> oh boy. That feels smooth. Paint it on like the skin on a peach. Just out of reach. Got me dreaming. I'm standing there wide awake. True believe it. There's more than I can take. But when she's gone, she's looking through my mind. And like it's painted on. Here she comes. Like she fell from here. Bringing out the devil in me Skin tight I put pretend that I live her a living Turning on the fantasy But when she walked by Ain't no other girl on earth alive And that ain't no We have um, 
you know, vegetable carvers on board, and we always do displays during the normal cruise anyway, but they are normal cruises, and uh, a couple of the watermelon guys are talking to the band, and uh, they said, oh, we're in such and such a band and a group, and one of the guys decided, oh, we'll make one for him, and of course, once one's made for one, then it becomes, well, okay. And it just sort of evolved that way. I think it was very popular, actually. Hey, did you notice out here we made a little name tag so everybody knows who you are, huh? Yeah. I'll I think they know already, but just but in case. Right. This, Taj this, Mahal. Is, this is the chef's work on the, on the ship, by the way, these melons. When you see it, all that, all that, it's, that's what, I just think it's outstanding. Because you're traveling together, you're eating together, you're going to the shows, you start talking to people about their experiences, sharing, you get to know them. And so I'm, you know, different artists like Pookie from Little Ed, who's a bass player, had the cabin next to mine. So every night he would come and advise us on what we should wear. You know, you just you just become friends with people. You know, I've seen Tosh for so many years now, so I always go to his shows. You know, it's just it, it's very very special because you know each other as people. So this is what you call a, a two room a two room sauce, then? Yeah. Yeah, you got to smell it from two rooms away. Two rooms away. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's like I'll cook it and I'll be like real nervous. I'll be wandering around, you know, standing yeah. out on the porch and nah, I can't smell it's it. Not over ready there. yet. Well, the room can't smell it over there. You know, and then all of a sudden you'll be standing somewhere and say, ooh, yeah, going there, that pot's going, ha, 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 ha. Now you know it's ready. You know it's ready. Here, if they're going to smell it two rooms away, that's over in the Vista Lounge. So yeah. probably, that's, that's two rooms away you here. You want to so. make them real, man. What are they doing yeah. over there? Huh? <laughs> Is that Tom Hall over there cooking? <laughs> Taj is cooking. Hey, I like people, it. people, people. Anybody who has a need, uh, somebody finds a way to fill it. Somebody needs money, uh, people gather around and put money in the hat until they find a way to get them enough money to, to solve their financial problems. Case in point, uh, there's a gentleman named Shamat who's a regular cruiser that has come with bands as a dancer, come as a roadie. He showed up in Florida without a passage on board and he said, Roger, how can I get on the ship? How, what can I do? And I said, well, I think all our positions are filled. Um, do you have any money? And he said, well, I have a credit card. Well, his credit card probably wasn't substantial enough. He showed up the next day with an envelope practically full of money. His cruiser family took care of him. They, they wanted him on board and he didn't have the money to get on board and so he went around, found people who were willing to support his passage on the ship. I didn't hear anything about it. I know Shamat was trying to um, come up with creative ways to get on the boat. He was asking to be, this is a web page and everybody, he was asking to be a third or a fourth in somebody's room but then he really wasn't gonna sleep in their room but he just wanted to get on, I guess, you know, the list to be on the boat, but he just he wanted to. And then he, and then he didn't want to have to pay. It was, it was very contorted. I'm not sure what happened there. You know, well, Shamat came on as a uh, as a roadie dancer with uh, Chubby Carrier's Idaho band, and he did that a couple of years. And then when Chubby was not booked, uh, Shamat still found a way to get on. I don't know how he uh, got through, uh, because there wasn't a band that he was currently working with, but he ended up on board. So there there is rumor that he, he was a stowaway that year. There was only one little problem with going. And my name wasn't on the list to go into heaven. And I prayed, and there was a pass, but I call it the stowaway. I dressed as one of the performers. But there's so much life on a cruise ship, you seldom have time to go to your room. He's not in my room. Yeah, he's visited, but he's, he's not staying there. And you have the lavish lounges. My favorite, the Queen's Lounge, where the chairs and cushions are so deep and soft. And that's where, that's where the last free man on earth uh, name came from. <laughs> Traveling shoes for you. Hey, hey, 
woman sing this song to me, said her grandmother used to sing it. I'm going to pass it on to you. Oh, you know that, you know that, you know that death come a-knocking on my mother's door, singing, come on, mother, ain't you ready to go? And my mother stood down, buckle up her shoes, and she move on down by that Jordan stream, and then she shout, a photo of Skip James. He's actually singing the first note of his comeback. He recorded in 1931 and for uh, Paramount, then vanished for 33 years, and there's no record that he worked for the railroad or was a preacher or owned a store. He flat out vanished, 33 years, scratch your seven minutes. So from 31 to 30, 64, he vanished. So they found him living in Tunica, and I, actually he was in a hospital. They found him in Tunica, and they brought him to um, Newport. So he was tuning his guitar, and then he sat on stage, and the audience was all white. And I said to myself, I want this minute. The first note this man will ever play in his life for white people. And he sat there, and he put his and so he brought his head back and I said, I want this song, I want this verse, I want this line, I want this word, I want this first note. And he brought his head back, he hit the guitar and he sang, I, 
I'd rather be the devil than to be that woman's man. It's a, a strip The black people had lost the blues. And, and, and they got too sophisticated. We don't want to hear that old go, bang, 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 bang. They wanted some, uh, up tempo, they wanted to do all that dance and so forth. And in between you and I, right now, I'll actually say, if, if it wasn't for the white folks, there wouldn't be no blues now. Sure won't. What they doing Chilling now? All did. When Roger had a dream, and his dream came true, and he called on everybody he knew, and we fulfill the dream. And we are family. Cruisers, hey, they don't care if it's Sam, Sam Santa Claus playing. They gonna applaud, they gonna, applaud they gonna make him right. work. And when you got MCs like us, the entertainers got to work. Got to work. They can't come on the stage yeah. half-stepping. Got to go to work. That's and the good. lineup be so tough. So you got to come on with the come on. That's right. Oh, I got too many bad habits, man.
everything I do is bad for me. I can't help it now. All my nasty habits that just don't let me be. All my nasty habits that just don't, that just don't let me be. How's it feel out there? You feel good tonight, everybody? Are you in the mood? Are you ready for another night? We still got all night, man. Don't sit there thinking about this is all. Oh, it's all over now. It ain't over now. I know how you are. There are going to be three or four people will get some sleep tonight. The rest of you will be up until 8.30 tomorrow morning. I'm proud of you. And the winner this year of the cruiser who we think had the least sleep is Howard Harshaw. Howard Harshaw was seen in the piano bar about every night past 6 a.m. The Wang Dang Doodle Award. I just think sleeping is overrated. <laughs> well, go your bad ass on. Cruise. <laughs> Our ship kicks ass. Let me hear, let me hear you say it. Our ship kicks ass! Give Captain Harris a great big round of applause. The best ship captain on the seven seas. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. I'd just like to say it's been a fabulous cruise for all of us. Our crew have really enjoyed having you on board, as I'm sure you know, and uh, they'd like me to pass on their thanks to you. All they will say is they need the rest tomorrow as well. This has been a beautiful cruise, but the king bows to no one, so take proud and get bowed to by the king. You know, Roger's a pretty engaging guy, you know. Roger's all right. Passionate. I've, I've, I've known him for a long, 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 long time, and, and uh, you know, when he first started doing these things, it was like, oh, what's he up to now, you know? But then it, then it turned into this, wow, this guy is a genius. Milton died. I was with him 31 years. Yeah. When I came on a cruise, Roger knew I needed something and invited me on a cruise my first year coming on the cruise after Milton died and everything. Everybody was so glad to see Scrap Iron. I didn't think nobody, you know. Really knew who Scrap Iron was. And, and cared about me. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't, it was everybody. I mean, from the, the people on the ship to people I didn't even know. And right now, I don't have an email, but I have telephone numbers, and I keep in contact with these people all the time. Scrap, looking forward to seeing you, you know? Yeah. And, 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 you know, just somebody, we family. And don't forget bell seasoning. Costs about a dollar, dollar, ten cents, but make your soup jump up and smack your mama. <laughs> <laughs> and then your mama smack all the rest of the relatives in the family. Smack, 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 smack. How do you like me now? <laughs> As you know, this is all winding down. Well, hell, you know, tomorrow you're gonna get your ass off this ship, so you might as well start realizing it. But my friend, for many, 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 many years, we can't go no further without, don't make me cry, my very close friend, Roger Neighbors. Thank you, Jimmy. I think it bodes well for the future that something like the Blues Cruise has to add on, oh, you have to add on another boat, a whole other boat, the size of this one, in order to accommodate all the people who want to go on it every year. You know, so I talked to Roger about this idea I had, uh, you know, where I thought maybe we should, after the cruise every year, put a little tour together. And uh, because big package tours are, are a little bit cost prohibitive, I thought maybe we'd make a review out of it. This first one's going to happen this after this cruise where I'm gonna go out, my band's gonna back up uh, Deanna Bogart, Magic Dick, and Ronnie Baker Brooks, and we're gonna go take a little blues cruise out there on the scene. Me and Tommy Castro is getting together with Deanna Bogart and, and Magic Dick. We are supposed to be doing something. I got the idea because people get so excited about this that it might be a good idea to take it on land 
And he then, doesn't want to stop. And then he doesn't want to stop. And then no. you could go into all of this stuff. They could get a, they could get an idea about the crews and maybe come on it. I don't know. Well, the horse comes up to the barrier and he stops and you just keep flying over the barrier. <laughs> <laughs>